is utterly painful for me to know that the world keeps seeing us time and time again under such lugubrious circumstances. However, speaker, it has taught me many, many lessons. And it's also reminded me of many that I've known for several years, one of which I was taught by Tony Evans, which is, if all you see is what you see, then you don't see all there is to be seen. Speaker, I have never met the Deputy President. In fact, in the last two days, the first time we've ever shared any space together. And to be honest, I don't think that we have much in common. I personally feel like there is a lot there, uh, to, there is a lot to be desired in his leadership style, for me personally. However, instead of going to the Bible, I want to go instead into my own experience and draw some parallels. Mr. Speaker, I, of course, know, uh, people know that I have glaucoma and I've been uh, fighting and battling it for several years of my life. And Speaker, when I first got my diagnosis when I was just a teenager in high school, I was told that it was eminent. There was no running away from my condition. And I didn't know at the time that I had anything that was going on. I was just going about my life, but inside of me and around me, there was a condition that was building up and building up and building up and I had no idea what was going to happen in the future. Mr. Speaker, now I have le I've been left blind and I cannot see in front of me even when I put my hand in front of my face. Mr. Speaker, the parallels I draw with my life and the current hearing that we are sitting in today is that the Deputy President did not foresee this happening to him either. Mr. Speaker, I have also drawn parallels of feeling out of control, which I assume that he feels being given a diagnosis that seems eminent, that he cannot stop. Mr. Speaker, I also feel that um, he, has, he is probably feeling fear. That's what I've heard. Mr. Speaker, feeling betrayed, feeling angry. And I felt all those feelings because of a situation that I can draw parallels with in this, in this hearing. And Mr. Speaker, I have been fighting and fighting, pleading and praying, trying everything in my power to mitigate, to stop, just like he has been doing in the last several um, week, uh, weeks that this has been going on, Speaker. And it's funny that it's Blindness Awareness Month this month in October because there are many lessons, like I said, that I have learned and I wish that the public would also take from this experience. Mr. Speaker, I hope that, this, that um, the public understands that um, when they have their back to the wall, when they've been in any kind of battle, even when they feel isolated, there is something called golfer's elbow, which I learned. Golfer's elbow is the idea that, um, or is a condition that golfers usually have when they hold on to the grip of their club too tight for a long period of time, and they end up injuring their wrist all the way up to their elbow because they're holding on too tight, too tight to an outcome, too tightly. And I've learned that sometimes you just have to let that go. And I hope that the public can take that away from this situation. Mr. Speaker, we must move away from hegemony. The idea of being dominated by one group or a person or a, or a company or a state because we are a democratic republic and we need to move away from such ideology, such utterances, such behavior, Mr. Speaker. However, in the 11 counts, I have seen many that have no evidence, and I've seen some that do have some evidence, but I have not been particularly given confidence by the witness in chief, the mover of this motion, when I saw him up on the stand, Mr. Speaker. Although none of us can relate to what it's like to being a deputy president in this room for sure, we can definitely relate to the lessons that I've just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, make decisions today that will not betray you tomorrow. That's one. I also want to, um, to share that even though you're in a battle, whatever that might be, financial, personal, medical, whatever it is that you're going through at the moment and you feel like your back is on the wall and everything, all the odds are against you, remember that it gets better. You do better. You will experience better. And we will become better, Mr. Speaker. I will finish. And I hope that the senators will remember what I said to them yesterday from the Bible, Proverbs 17, 15. Senator Newton.